Good morning people and welcome to this third video on the Unreal Engine 4 blueprints and today we're going to go um, and have a look at the character blueprint because if you remember or if you watched the last video I created an actor based blueprint that just had some very basic stuff it has a root, it has a static mesh and it sort of moves on uh, on the tick event so we can just sort of make this a bit smaller so that you can see stuff. I'm not going to use the edge much, so let's just make something like this. And we minimize that. So the actor is uh, its useful for stuff like doors or uh, moving things that you want to be able to collide with, but that don't control uh, very much. Um, so today we're going to just remove this actor because we are going to right click create a new blueprint and I hope you can see that and this time we're going to uh, create it off of the character class and as you can see here a character is a type of poem that includes the ability to walk around so let's just say test character and when we open this um, it actually has several parts if you remember from the actor um, it only had a I think it's called default scene root um, and no mesh, no nothing. Uh, but the character actually has uh, several parts. The character movement, which I'll go into soon, but it has a root, which is this capsule component, which is actually used for collision. It has an arrow component, uh, which basically just points in one direction, and it has a mesh. Uh, in this case, it doesn't have anything plugged into the uh, skeletal mesh, and it doesn't have anything put into. Huh. Okay. Uh, I'll just pick the skeletal cube here, so we have something to look at. So I move this down, and I scale this up. Now it would, of course, be useful if the character actually uh, resembled the. Uh, capsule component because uh, that's what we're going to use for our collision um, so let's make the box a bit smaller than the capsule unfortunately I don't think you can see this very well on the video but the uh, capsule sort of sticks out on the sides and a bit at the top as well so this is what we're going to use and we're also going to go into the mesh scroll down a bit and uh, where is the collision part? Here it is, collision presets. So, uh, character mesh is uh, when you uh, check for collisions, you can set a different type to check for. For instance, you can check for uh, world static, which is static environments, world dynamic, which is uh, stuff that's moving, like actors. Uh, and in this case, it's uh, character mesh, but in the, we're actually not going to use this mesh for anything. So we can set this to overlap all uh, or we can even set it to custom um, yeah world static is fine and just overlap. Uh, I'm going to go into depth on this later in other videos but for today we're just going to work a bit with the character. So if we drag this one into our world here uh, we should probably save it first uh, or compile it so we just go in no we don't have to compile it because we haven't changed anything but yeah so if we just go in here you can see it's falling down meaning it has uh, gravity and it also has collision because it stops when it hits the ground um, obviously the the model is sort of floating because um, I didn't really align this very well with the bottom here so what you want is basically the model to be at the very uh, very low edge here. So let's just save. We hit play and it falls down. Uh, it's not perfect but it looks a little bit better. Um, now as you can see here um, you can just run through it with the player. Uh, this is because we turned off the collision on the model and uh, we're actually not doing anything with the character movement yet. So let's go back into 
our character here. And as usual, the construction script and the event graph is both empty. Um, so instead of using, um, I'll just open up my actor. As you can see here, what we used was set world location. But what we're going to use with our character is actually, if we show this here, we can open up character. We're going to interact with a character movement node. Um, character movement is a bit different uh, from just working with stuff like um, the mesh, for instance. Uh, whoops. So if we drag the mesh out um, and we take the context sensitive one, it has a few different, uh, you know, the get world location and the set world location that we used last time. The character movement one has. As you can see, it has a smaller tree, but you can use stuff like uh, velocity. Um, unfortunately, it's outside the window here. So let's drag upwards and see. Get velocity and set velocity. And we're going to use set velocity this time instead. Because the character movement node actually has settings down here that control how the character controls in the world. Uh, max step height is how tall um, a world difference can be. For instance, like this wall. If this was um, if this was 45 units, you could move uh, up on it without jumping. Uh, jump velocity, uh, walkable floor angle, so how much the floor can lean before you can't walk up it. Uh, gravity scale, friction, walk speed. You have all of these different settings that you can use. Um, I don't know if they're actually in the defaults. No, they are not. Yes, there they are. Um, so you can actually interact with these without having to open the, the graph. And I'll show you some stuff with that. But first, let's just say uh, event level Let's go with begin play and let's have a delay for two seconds just to make sure that the editor uh, or that the game starts before this event runs. And we can do a set velocity. Uh, what direction is it? Y? Yep. So Y, uh, let's say 500. We compile this and we move this to the ground and we hit play one two boom so as you can see this moves very very little and this is because the friction stops it just like if you would jump um, the gravity would take over and uh, force the uh, the character down to the ground again so what we can do is we can set ground friction to a lower let's say 0.5 instead. And we hit play, one, two, poo. Uh, okay, it doesn't really change much. I thought it would, but yeah. Let's see. Oh, it might be this one instead. Breaking, deceleration, walking. That's it. So as you can see, it now slows down uh, slower. Um, like if you wanted a slippery object or something like that, you could have that. And you can also change this. So there is walking, there is flying. So if you're jumping, for instance, you can have a different deceleration, uh, depending on how much air control you want. Um, like my character for the blooper, for the platform game that I have here is uh, very high because I want the player to be able to do a lot of stuff. But if you want something more realistic, you obviously want lower air control. And then you set this. And you can also click here to reset the defaults. So that's just some basic stuff. Um, let's change this, or let's go back into the graph. So instead of this, what we have to do is work with the tick again. So we take event tick. We create a new variable that is a float delta time. 
and we just set the delta time because that's just helpful. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to use this in this case, but let's go with that. And we just set the velocity uh, on each frame. Um, 200 is probably a lot, but let's try that. Yay, it moves at a decent pace. And as you can see here, it when it collides with the wall, it stops moving. And again, it's because the uh, the collision is a bit bigger than the box. But it stops moving and it doesn't actually do anything. So now we're going to make it turn around when, uh, when it hits a wall. And for this, we're um, let's do a sequence. So sequence, and then we're going to use uh, trace. So there are a bunch of different traces. Unfortunately, a few of them are probably outside. No, it should be fine. Um, so there are a couple of different uh, types here. Um, Capture trace for objects obviously checks for objects and for or by channel um, checks by channel. And what I mean with a channel is the thing that I showed you before in the collision part here. Um, so you can check for uh, this object type here. Um, as well as pawn, spectator, ragdoll, all of these different things. And you can actually create your own channels as well. Um, but that's kind of more advanced. I'm just using three in my my own game. It's World Static, which is all of the world. It's um, character, I think. Um, let's see here what I'm using. I'm just using these ones. So pawn is all of my enemies, and vehicle is actually the player. So the object type actually doesn't mean anything. You can use it for whatever you want, as long as you're consistent with it. Uh, but yeah. So we're going to do a single, no, we're not going to do a capsule, we're going to do line trace. Single line trace for, no, by channel. So let's pick this one instead. And um, traces work in a specific way where you have to have a start and an end point and they have to be separate. So you can't have one thing plugged into the same way uh, or same location and expect it to work. And you can also not line trace. Like if you want to check collision with an object, you can't start the line trace inside of the object and check outwards. Uh, you have to start from the outside and check in because uh, not all objects have uh, back faces, uh, meaning they don't they don't exist from the inside, basically. So you will always have to check um, check your line from the um, from the outside in. At least with static world objects, um, dynamic objects work much much better with um, with either case. But I would recommend always starting um, sort of from the center of your object, like just in the middle here, and checking outwards. Because if you're doing it for um, what the hell? Is just visibility in camera? Okay, this has changed since I uh, used it. Hmm. I'm just going to go into the list here and check object type query. Oh, okay, I can still use this. So, um, character camera, hmm, this is actually working a bit differently. Um, so I'll just uh, test it and see if it works, otherwise we'll have to uh, figure out a change. But for start at least, what we do is we take our character movement, we get uh, Get location. What's it called? Uh, what the hell? Let's take capsule component instead. Get world location. And we plug that into the start. 
And for the end, we take this again, but we hit our plus button to do vector plus. Now we break the vector. Let's just move this out of the way. And since we're moving in the y direction, we want to plus. Here we have to move things way back. And then we make make vector. So for the end, we want to add a bit to the uh, to the y direction, and we can actually go into the capsule component here and see how large it is. So the capsule radius here is 34, meaning if we uh, do a line trace for you know 35, it should work. But since I want to show it off, um, let's go with 50. So just compile. And if we go into the game here, it should actually be visible. Unfortunately, it isn't. Hmm. I should probably have checked this out before I started recording the video, but whatever. Uh, let's do 100. Um, it should be running. I'll just... Because the problem with line traces is that the line is super small, so I'm not sure if it would show up in the video uh, regardless. Um, let's see what happens if we play and we test character. It is running the node. Hmm. I'll just go into my own character and see. Let's stop it so we can make changes. And let's see, what do I use? I have a lot of line traces. I'm just going to check for the... Um, it's in tick and it's going to be these ones. So I have a single line trace for objects. Uh, oh yeah, that's why it's not working. I don't use the checkbox. So let's go back into test character and we use draw debug type um, for one frame. Now uh, you can hopefully see the small red line, and when it hits the wall, it's actually going to become a big red box. Uh, I'm not sure again how well this shows up in the video, but at least you should be seeing the red box that comes when it's actually colliding. Um, so now this works, and what we want to do is we want to create a branch, uh, because if uh, the return value doesn't return anything, we are not going to do um, anything at all. Um, because the if you get a return value, it basically means that it's colliding with something. And we changed this back to 35, I think it was I said. Let's test that. And if it actually collides, um, we want it to turn around. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a bool move right and if move right is true, we're going to create another branch. So if it collides, and if move right is true, we want to set set move right to false. And if it's false, we want to set it to true. And then we want to go into our set velocity here. And instead of just having a flat value, we're going to make a new vector. Whoops, everything is sort of overlapping, lapping. And we're going to use move right to select a float, a lot like what we did with our actor. 
And if move right is true, we want it to be positive 200, right? Otherwise, we want it to be negative. So we plug this into the Y. We hit compile and we go into the editor. Ah, now we have the problem that it's colliding with the character and it's also looking in the wrong direction. Um, hmm, I'm so confused. But that happens a lot, so let's just see. Oh, right, we don't check for collisions. That's why we have to change this one as well. Um, if move right is true, we have to uh, change this value as well. So let's get move right again and let's do another select float because we also have to check for um, check for the collisions when it's moving in both directions as well. So do something like this. Um, and we can also turn off collisions on the capsule component just to make sure that it doesn't uh, it doesn't collide with the player. Let's do something like this. Let's hit play again. Boink. And I'm not sure what the hell it's moving downwards as well. Um, okay. This is pretty weird. No, oh, no, it's not weird. It's apparent because I turned off collisions. Do overlap all and set. Uh, no, let's set this to custom. It has overlap, but we want it to block world static. It should probably be colliding with the floor, which makes a lot of sense. Um, so now, oh yeah, it's colliding with these uh, sort of pole thingies that I use for my start. Okay, so collisions, uh, a bit iffy, but at least it's pretty much working. I'm, I'll try to make sure that you can see that it's reacting. So the red box shows up because the tiny, tiny red line sticking out of the character should not be very apparent, but there you have it. And um, since I use uh, set velocity, uh, unfortunately the um, the settings on the character movement doesn't apply, like uh, walk speed and run speed and stuff like that. Um, but uh, I can just show you how it looks in my actual character. Uh, instead of set movement, I have or set velocity. I'm using uh, add movement input instead, which um, uses the walk speed. And I'll just show you this because if we go, we scroll way down, and I have 650, so let's set this to 100. We go into the play here and he's moving really really slowly back and forth and if we use 650 again it's going to be quick Room. but yeah that's a basic primer on the character type which um, unlike the actor which is moved, used more for uh, basic stuff like doors and everything you want to move, like lifts or whatever. Um, the character is very useful for creating stuff like enemies, which are supposed to move around. Um, and in my game, I actually base... Uh, not that guy. Um, yeah, obviously, if you want things to move around platforms like these guys, you don't want to create them off of character. However, the guys that run around your level at the base, um, which are unfortunately invisible and are only a tiny box, um, create them off of character instead. 
like this guy here. Boink. So even though I made a lot of mistakes in this case, I'm probably going to have to pre prepare a bit better for next video. Um, at least I got this one out and it's moving and it works eh, fairly well. So this has been Jonas with an Unreal Engine 4 video and I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.